First case, blue nodule, and this is the context. What do you think? Excise, yeah, sure. With confocal, what we saw was just roundish cells, monomorphous roundish cells. We like it because they look more like nevocytes. But we cannot see deep. And again, we need to excise. Usually what we are doing in these patients with uh, giant or large congenital nevi is total body imaging, ultrasonography, palpation, and in any nodule, ultrasonography. And if there is any kind of high vascularization in Doppler, we excise. And we have already now a collection of uh, proliferative nodules that we identify in these children and some young adults too. Sometimes they are blue, sometimes they are pink. Differential diagnosis is not easy, also for expert pathologists. And sometimes we need to also use uh, molecular studies to define if there are very few molecular alterations or only gains and loses of one area or one chromosome and not more, we categorize them as a proliferative nodules. And most of our children are doing fine. As I explained to you, with confocal in these cases, epidermis is preserved because it's not invasion of the epidermis. And we see in the dermis these uh, regular cells. Ultrasonography extremely important, and Doppler. But unfortunately, Doppler many times is positive for these proliferative nodules. We cannot differentiate benign proliferative nodules from melanoma arising in anivus just with Doppler, because Doppler is very worrisome. It's a lot of neoangiogenesis in them. And then it's in really important to do the excision, as you said, and analyze by expert pathologists. Because if not, the misdiagnosis of melanoma is very high. Pathologists without expertise can overdiagnose a melanoma in these children. Let's move to the second case. 11 year old, female, multiple nevi. And I don't know, are you doing the Euromelanom? Euromelanom, no, the African melanom campaign doesn't exist here, I suppose. Uh, once a year, we invite all the population to attend dermatologists by free for early diagnosis, and she was coming. Usually when we see a, child, a child, we think, will be nothing because melanoma is very rare in children, you know? But in this case, I saw this congenital nevus that the mother told me, it's changing. Grow in shape, and now the papule in the center is new. Huh. Okay, led to dermoscopy. And under the dermoscopy, what do we see? Grayish color, yes. And the negative of the pigment network. Do you remember that yesterday I told you, be careful with the negative of the pigment network? It could be a sign of melanoma rising in anivus. Then, I don't like to excise benign nevus in children. But of course, in this case, I excise. And this lesion was a melanoma rising in anivus. Then be careful. Usually it's extremely rare, but it exists. Next case. She is a boy, uh, he is a boy, uh, 12 years old, and I'm following him because of congenital nevus. Not because this, because it's just stupid, it's a small congenital nevus, we don't need to follow. But there were cases of melanoma in the family, and the mother was very worried. And I was telling them, oh, we don't need to excise, we take a picture, we take a picture, it's always the same, no, no changes. Once a year, when she is visited, I take the picture of the mole of the child. And was stable, 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 and suddenly change. This is the clinical image. 
It's true, it's irregular, but it's a congenital nevus. Endermoscopy, again, it's strange. And the mother told me that it's growing, and I see that it's growing. You see this reticulation, asymmetry, gray color, what we are going to do? Excise, of course. Oh, and again, a melanoma arising in a congenital nevus, a small congenital nevus. It's rare, very rare, but again, it exists. And this is histology. Uh, it's very, very important to know that even uh, melanomas arising uh, in a nevus in children are rare, they exist. And we had the opportunity in the International Dermoscopy Society to put together dermoscopic images of 52 cases of melanoma in children and young adolescents. And together with Cristina Carrera, we were able to classify them in different subtypes. One subtype is those that I showed to you, melanomas arising in a nevus, that they are very similar to those that we can see in adults. Usually asymmetry, many times this negative of the pigment network that you see in the three images here. This is not the normal thing that we see in normal nevi in children. Sometimes we saw very difficult lesions, impossible to diagnose. Don't take care of them. But what is more relevant? Spitz melanoma and how they look like. Yesterday also we saw them. They are tumors, many times pink tumors, many times fast growing pink tumors, but we can see remnants of pigmentation, then it's a little bit more easy to diagnose. But if we do not see these remnants of pigmentation, we need to have in mind that these kind of melanomas exist. They are similar. Clinically, you can think in a botryomycoma, no, to a pyogenic granuloma. But under dermoscopy, you see different things. Dotted vessels, atypical vessels, and shiny white streaks. And this is something that usually you do not see in pyogenic granulomas. Okay, then my advice is growing pink lesion, don't freeze. Okay, it's better excise and pathology. It's easy. It's easy and you will not miss this kind of melanomas. And then pigmented spits. Pigmented spits melanomas are more easy because they have pigmentation and then we know that we are in the context of a melanocytic lesion. And these kind of tumors are not common. And when you see them with blue, whitish, with this typical pattern of a speech with globular pattern, with blue, with gray, with streaks at the periphery, you will excise. Okay? The, the gr great problem that we have with children is that, is that we excise 22,000 benign lesions to diagnose very few melanomas. The problem is that we, need, do, we do not need to excise thousands of benign lesions. All the lesions that are brown, globular, those that we saw yesterday, we don't need to do anything with them. But be careful because it's very rare, but melanoma in children exist. Let's move to another lesion. Clinically. What is this? Spitz. It could be Spitz. You're right. 21 year old, lesion on the knee, fast growing in five months. Don't freeze because the idea sometimes is could be a word. No? Could be a word. Okay, but let's do dermoscopy. Don't freeze. First dermoscopy. Is this the pattern of a word? No. What you see is these atypical vessels, some of them can mimic a coma, 
but some are very thick, other very thin. We call them polymorphous vessels. Also, we, we see here milky red is pink. Usually, dermal nevus are normal color of the skin, not pink. If you see pink with vessels and remnants of pigmentation with some globules here, do you see them? Then you already said could be a Spitz. Spitz tumor. I don't know if it will be a Spitz nevus, a Spitz tumor, or a Spitz melanoma, but is in the range of a Spitz. Uh, sorry, acral? Acromic melanoma. Yeah, 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 of course. Of course, of course, of course. A melanotic melanoma, when we are in the, in the context of the speeds, it could be uh, the speeds melanoma and then the speedsoid melanoma that is just a melanoma and can be a melanotic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Then, very important, every time that you see a fast-growing lesion in young adults, put the dermatoscope because this is not the pattern of a word. And then you will excise, okay? It is not so rare as melanoma, the speech tumors, but they exist. And then again, pathology, it's very important. In this case, it was classified as atypical speech tumor. Now, the, with the new classification, they are classified as melanocytomas of um, severe dysplasia or medium dysplasia, but doesn't matter. They are in the range of lesions that they are benign, but we need to be sure that the margins are enough. And if we do not have a security margin of three, five millimeters, it's better to re-excise. Another example is very similar tumors, fast-growing tumors, pink lesions. And again, dermoscopy, what we see is these dotted vessels, shiny white streaks. Do you remember? Yesterday, with this pattern, negative of the pigment network, shiny white streaks, dotted vessels, patterns of Spitz tumors. And if you amplify, you can see these brown globules at the periphery. But yeah, doesn't matter. With the pattern, you already know. With confocal microscopy, you can identify these uh, typical cells. It's fine. And this nesting that are growing very uh, hi, let's, and this is the spits again. With this banana shape um, and nest characteristic of the tumor. Another example, 22 years old. And again, we have the negative of the pigment network of this reticulation. And also, in this case, because I see brown globules everywhere, but what do you think about this? Yellow tears with whitish yellow. You can miss think in a Lishmania. No? <laughs> but in fact, it was not. It was a spitz. It was a spitz. And then, just to remember, spitzoid lesion represents a challenging and controversial group of tumors in terms of clinical recognition, biological behavior, and management strategies. Although spitz nevi are considered benign tumors, their clinical and dermoscopic morphology overlaps with the spitzoid melanoma and renders the management of spitzoid lesions particularly difficult. For this reason, now we have a European grant that I'm coordinating of 8 million to study melanoma in children, adolescents and young adults. If you have any case, please contact me and we can do all the molecular studies to better characterize these tumors. And yeah, she, uh, she's a, a girl, it's a video that she did she had a melanoma in a congenital nevus here at the age of 18. She progressed with lung metastasis. She was treated with BRAF and MEK inhibitors, 
at the beginning of these treatments. And at that time, she did a video on, on Facebook, on YouTube, and everywhere, promoting sun protection in young people. Unfortunately, after one year, she progressed and died. And even melanoma in children is very, very rare. In young adults, is one of the more prevalent malignant tumors. Because uh, before breast cancer is growing, children tumors decrease, and in adolescents and young adults, melanoma start to increase in incidence. Case number seven. What do you think? Which color? Yellow. Where is the lesion? Oh, on the palm. Exactly. The lesion was excised, and before getting the results, because the resident did the shaving, it's again there. <laughs> More yellow. And Santo Granuloma. Okay. Fantastic. You did a very good diagnosis. <laughs> yellow color, very important. Under mascopy, we see yellow and orange in few situations, or in a specific situation, and it's very helpful to recognize these colors. And take home messages, remember that this Shantu granuloma pattern is yellow color and vessels that can mimic a basal cell carcinoma, arborizing vessels, but the color is yellow. We are arriving to, to the end. 12-year-old 12, 12 boy with a lesion that the mother explains it's two months history of growing. Only two months. Clinical image, dermoscopy. Pilomatricoma, yes, you are very good. This is a pilomatricoma. And just to remember this dermoscopic pattern with bluish, whitish, like clouds that are quite characteristic of this tumor. Fantastic. And with confocal microscopy, also you are able to see these calcifications. For this reason, I was saying just a few months, and it's already ca with calcium there. It's strange, but it's what the mother explained. And also we can see the ghost cells with confocal microscopy and the correlation with histopathology. And then we publish this. And I think that is my last case. What do you think? This is she. And she's 16 years old. This is she. Could be. This is she's. Could be a natural tumor. Could be this is she's. Clinically. What we will do? with these lesions. Yeah, we did Gorlin. <laughs> we did Confocal. They are VCCs. And it was a gorlin gold syndrome. <laughs> Very small, tiny VCCs. Just to show and remember that also dermoscopy, it's very useful to recognize pits. And you have Gorlin also. <laughs> then you can recognize them.